Our quote for today is, Mr. Rogers did not adequately prepare me for the people in my neighborhood. Today on this Friday during this year of St. Joseph, I want to look at our next title in the litany of St. Joseph, St. Joseph, Hope of the Sick. One of the reasons why Pope Francis wrote his apostolic letter on St. Joseph called the Heart of the Father, not only was it to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the declaration of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, which occurred in 1870, so the year 2020 would be the 150th anniversary. So he wanted to write a letter, but then he declared the year of St. Joseph. And when you read the document, it only takes, oh, maybe 20, 30 minutes to read this beautiful letter that Pope Francis wrote. I encourage all of you to read it. He talks about the pandemic, and this was on the heart of Pope Francis to offer St. Joseph as the hope of the sick. He mentioned about all the suffering people throughout the world, asking St. Joseph's intercession for all those suffering from the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic, maybe financial hardships and marital hardships and all sorts of difficulties that the world has been going through these last 18 months or so. And that he especially wrote it to help sustain healthcare workers and nurses and doctors and those on the front lines. St. Joseph is not only the hope of the sick, but he's the patron saint of workers and all the people that, who have been working so hard to help those who are suffering. And in Father Calloway's book, he mentions that St. Joseph is the hope of the sick and that in the history of the church, St. Joseph has helped heal many individuals and saints. For example, St. Teresa of Avila, the first three years that she was in the convent, she was bedridden, but she was miraculously cured through the intercession of St. Joseph. And then he talks about the story of how St. Therese, the little flower, would have died in infancy were it not for the intercession of St. Joseph. Her parents, St. Louis and Zelie Martin, were very devoted to St. Joseph. Shortly after St. Therese was born, she became deathly ill. Fearing that Therese was going to die, Zelie knelt before a statue of St. Joseph in her bedroom and asked the saint to heal her daughter. Miraculously, St. Therese was healed. Let me just read this paragraph from the writings of Zelie Martin, the mother of Therese. She says, I went up to my room. Therese was on the first floor with the wet nurse. I knelt at the feet of St. Joseph and I asked him, for the grace of healing for this little one, while resigning myself to God's will. I do not often cry, but I was crying as I prayed. I didn't know if I should go downstairs. In the end, I decided to go down, and what did I see? The baby was nursing vigorously. She did not let go until 1 p.m. She spit up a bit and fell back as though dead upon her wet nurse. There were five of us around her, everyone was stunned. There was a worker who was crying. I felt my blood run cold. The baby had no visible breath. <clears throat> it did so good for us to lean over to her and discover a sign of life because we could see nothing. But she was so calm, so peaceful, that I thank God for having her die so gently. Then a quarter of an hour went by, and my little Therese opened her eyes and started to smile. So it seems not only was she healed of this sickness, but perhaps even brought back to life through the intercession of St. Joseph. And so he concludes this chapter by saying, St. Joseph wants you to go to your spiritual father to ask for help and healing. He, St. Therese was healed as an infant, Although we know later she suffered many ailments and eventually succumbed to death, even Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead, died again. Thus, whether you experience a physical healing or not, St. Joseph always offers hope for an illness-free life in heaven. So that's what heaven is, illness-free, eternal life. And St. Joseph will help us to get there. If you've ever gone to 
Montreal and go to the Oratory of St. Joseph built by Blessed Andre Bassett. You'll notice that when you walk in, you'll see hundreds of crutches lining the walls of the vestibule. All those who went to the shrine of St. Joseph to be healed, they went there crippled or paralyzed or, or uh, lame or deaf, and they were miraculously healed through the intercession of St. Joseph. And they left their crutches as testimony to his powerful intercession. So we pray today, St. Joseph, hope of the sick, pray for us.